So hi, um, we're going to be talking about measuring the inequality. We are Camila Ardila, Michael Babkin, and myself, Eugenia Fernandez. So firstly, we're going to be talking about measuring income inequality through the Lawrence curve and the Gini coefficients and the ratios for both the US and Spain. We're going to be comparing the OECD countries, then talking about healthcare, and lastly, education and its importance. So we have a quote here, um, a nation will not survive morally or economically when so few have so much and so many have so little, which is by Bernie Sanders. So firstly, um, when measuring uh, income inequality, we need to understand two key concepts, which are the Lorentz curve and the Gini coefficient. So the Lorentz curve is a graphical representation that illustrates the degree of inequality of income distribution in an economy compared to the line of absolute equality. That is the line we see in blue. The equitable distribution of equality is shown by a 45 um, degree line on the diagram. Um, and on the other hand, the Gini coefficient is a numerical measure of inequality contained in the Lorentz curve of an economy defined by the area between the diagonal and the Lorentz curve, divided by the entire area under the diagonal. This area represents the extent of inequality, so the more it rises, the more are increases, thus moving outwards to the bottom left corner. It's also important to describe a decile, which is a 10% portion of the population, which we're going to be discussing later on. So the Lorentz curve uh, plots the cumulative percentage of total income received against the cumulative number of recipients of population, starting with the individuals with the lowest income. The use of both the Gini coefficient and the Lorentz curve will give us a clearer understanding of the country's inequality. So, for this part of the project, we chose to compare um, two countries. Firstly, we have the US and then Spain. So we're gonna be looking firstly at Spain. In, in 1980, Spain had a Gini coefficient of 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.33.37, 0 .33 while in 2014, it had a coefficient of 0 0.339. From this, we can assume that Spain has an adequate uh, income equality which has remained steady throughout the years. One of the reasons why Spain's Gini coefficient slightly increased by 0 0.02 could be the 2009 recession, which affected the country's economy growth and wealth distribution. On the other hand, we have the United States, which is the first graph. So in the 1980s, the United States had a Gini coefficient of 0 0.326, while in 2014, it had a Gini coefficient of 0 0.379. Just like in Spain, we can conclude that the U.S. has an adequate income equality throughout the last four decades. However, in 2014, they were getting too close to the um, uh, to having a Gini coefficient of 0 0.4, which is a warning level. The reason of this increase uh, in the U.S. could be attributed to the increase in immigration, as well as low levels of education and uh, appropriate taxation system. So now we will continue uh, talking on the equality in both countries from a ratio perspective, which is shown in the following table. There are different deciles that we can use to better analyze the change in distribution. So it is the ratio of the average income of the richest X percent of the population to the average income of the poorest. Uh, it expresses the income of uh, the richest, the multiple of that of the poor. However, it is vulnerable to extreme values and outliers. We have compared both countries from the ratio perspective and obtained the results. The first 19 over 10 income inequality ratio is the ratio of wage or salary income earned by individuals at the 19th percentile compared to the earnings of workers at the 10th percentile. Policymakers in this case can compare two deciles to see what is the gap between the poorest and the richest in the society. Therefore, we can implement the policy pairing the poorest population. Secondly, the 90 over 50 ratio is uh, similar to the first one, but this time it is uh, uh, how the income of the middle class distributed relative to the richest. The ratio can also help to de determine the tax burden distribution among the relatively rich population. And lastly, we have the 50 over 10 ratio describing the inequality in the, of the middle class compared to the distribution of income with a poor population. Governments can determine the poverty line relative to the middle class and determine the amount of income or tax redistributed to each group. 
So politicians and policymakers can implement different kinds of policies affecting these ratios into different ways, which will be the redistribution, which means implementing those taxes and expenditure that provides public services to households will result in distribution of disposable income that differs from the distribution of the market income. And secondly, the pre-distribution, which uh, states affecting the endowments of people that have in order to change the inequality of income in the market. For example, a policy might be imposed to alter the wages of earnings um, in the person's endowment will be paid. In particular, it raises the value of the endowments of people who otherwise would suffer discrimination. Okay, so now we will be looking at the ratios on the Gini coefficient for 42 countries using the OECD data. When comparing the available data, we can see that there are different deciles enable the calculation of the interdecile ratios. For example, one of the measurements of the inequality uh, of the distribution is the 90 over 10 ratio, which provides the difference between the poorest and the richest. Additionally, we can see that there is a relation of countries having high Gini coefficient and a high ratio measures. However, it is not always the case as the sum countries that have the highest Gini coefficient do not have the highest ratio. Because of this, we can only rely on these two measures. And therefore, larger values mean the income from one decile of the distribution is higher relative to the income from another decile. Now we will explain other measurements of the distribution inequality. So when we were looking at other kinds of inequality, we thought that healthcare and education would be interesting sectors to look at, as these are two factors that can lead a country to development. So regarding healthcare, it is very important to look at the mortality inequality index. So for that, we chose different countries. We can see that the mortality rate has decreased in every single country since 1952 to 2002. However, in Russia, the rate started to go up again in 1987. This would be the only exception. We can also see that India and Brazil have decreased at a fastest rate, while Sweden and England have remained constant. We can attribute this to the fact that European countries have had the lowest Gini coefficient in terms of mortality and equality throughout the years, and that their world countries have had the highest. Therefore, they have made a lot of progress. To have a better understanding of the change, we also decided to do two ranking systems. So there's one for 1952 and then another one for 2002. In 1952, we can see that the highest country was Brazil with 0 0.41, which is a warming a warning level, while Germany was, was the lowest with 0 0.157, which was perfect equality. In 2002, we can observe how India had relative equality with 0 0.22 as a Gini coefficient, and then Sweden had 0 0.08, which is perfect equality. We can see that both Brazil and India had the biggest change. It was over 0 0.2. And for Brazil, we can attribute it to the fact that there's a better public health system. And in India, we can say that there's a better economic and demographic figures, and therefore there has been a reduction in poverty and infertility. Now, we decided to look at the composite coverage index by desire. As a general trend, we observed that the higher the desire, the higher the composite coverage index. We had some trouble and limitations when gathering this data, and it's mainly because there was not enough information by economic subgroup. And also because if we found certain countries, then the years wouldn't match between them. Therefore, we created a separate chart in our report. However, we still wanted to portray the composite coverage index by decile for a specific country throughout the years. So here we have the case of Peru. So every single line represents a decile. And as we can see, it is the same as in the general trend for countries, the higher the decile, the higher the composite coverage index. And this is mainly because of, of, of affordability. However, something that we observed like as a general trend was that in developed countries, the gap between the decile was smaller and in third world countries, it was higher, which is exactly what we can observe from decile 10 to decile one in this Peru composite coverage index. So the reason why the composite coverage index has increased for the years in Peru could be attributed to the social security coverage in employment, among other policies that has been implemented by the Peruvian government. Lastly, we want to focus on education. So 
Education is also a measure of development that can shape a person's opportunities in life. We decided to pick the indicator of women with no education because we believe that gender equality is imperative when in, ter in terms of education. We believe that empowering women can lead a country to have a higher GDP and a decreasing fertility rate because women will have more opportunities and as in areas to develop their career. Additionally, the fifth sustainable development goal from the UN is gender equality. Now, looking at this chart, we can see that throughout the years, the percentage of women with no education has noticeably decreased uh, in every single country. It is interesting because here we have different examples, which we decided to put in a ranking that we're gonna show you now. So here we can see that women with no education change. We can see that in countries such as France, USA and Canada, there hasn't been a change at all because these are developed countries that have always been precarious about having educated women. However, third world countries did have a significant change because nowadays there are more laws that cover women and there's more awareness in the topic. We also have an interesting example here, which is Kuwait. We can speak that Latin American countries are now investing more and providing scholarships for women. However, economic trouble was never the, the issue in Kuwait. What happened in Kuwait is uh, there has been a cultural shift that is mainly linked to religion. And now women are able to access more education than they used to before. This is the reason why before they had a 25% of women with no education. And nowadays that doesn't exist at all. So that was everything for today. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please let us know.